Let's talk to, speaking of the MRC, let's talk about that magnificent anniversary you hosted this week. Mm, the 50th anniversary of Noel Bonner entering the Senate as the first Indigenous parliamentarian in Canberra. It was actually the 51st anniversary, but we had to delay it last year because of COVID. <laughs> But I tell you what, what an evening. You know, we got a chance to focus on this guy. We heard from Julian Lisa, who'd sat behind him when he gave that magnificent speech to the Constitutional Convention in 1999 in favour of the Queen, in favour of a constitutional monarchy. Very passionate speech. Uh, and there was Brendan Nelson, the former Liberal leader, was there. Brendan has been a great admirer of this man so much that he carries a picture of him around in his wallet. He's a very inspiring character. And of course, Jacinda Price, you know, as, as heir to that tradition, gave a, gave a very moving speech too. So a, a great evening all round. And I thought about it, you know, we played this really uh, strong video of, no, 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 of Neville Bonner talking in an interview before he died. And he said, I don't think there'll be another Indigenous parliamentarian after me. Australians are not ready for it, certainly not in my lifetime. Well, he was right. There wasn't uh, any more in his lifetime. He died in 1999. But, but since then, Fred, there have been 14 more and 11 of them are in Parliament right now. So we're in a really uh, uh, important moment where, you know, it, it's become normal, uh, more than normal. It's just... I, unremarkable well, that you have Indigenous people in well, Parliament. Well, we've got more than ever, and yet we are being told that our Parliament needs an, an, a separate Indigenous voice. I mean, the, the, the irony of this anniversary coming at this time is quite intense, isn't it? It is. And, and, and you know, the, a lot of people struggle, I do too, with the idea of a voice. Uh, and, mm. and you've only got to look at the Indigenous members in Parliament now. Everything from the sort of wide-eyed, lunatic, anti-colonialist nutbag that, that is Lydia Thorpe. I hope I'm not being too kind to her. <laughs> uh, you know, right through to sort of Jackie Lambie doing her own thing. And then, you know, the, the eminently sensible centrist Jacinta Price at the other end. So between them, I mean, how would you find an Aboriginal voice that sort of summed up everything they all agree on? Exactly. You could probably write what they agreed on on the back of an envelope, you know. And, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, that's the biggest problem for me. Uh, that well, you'd... the biggest problem for me, um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that Lydia Thorpe didn't even turn up to this event. No, she didn't. She doesn't turn up to Parliament half the time. Why would she come? I mean, it's a very colonial sort of event, isn't it? Yeah. But, yeah. A, but Neville Bonner was the, had the polar opposite of what she was. He said, I am here to represent the people of Australia, number one, the people of Queensland, number two. I'm here to represent my God because I'm a Christian and, and finally my party. And then overall, I'm here to represent Indigenous people and I feel a great connection and, and duty there. But that's number one was Australia, right? He was there to represent. He saw that if we're going to get anything like true reconciliation, it meant everybody coming together. You know, it, it meant it meant reconciliation does not mean, you know, blaming everything on one side or the other. And yet well, that's Lydia Thorpe's position. Exactly. And since since Neville's time, what we've witnessed is the rise of this uh, the insidious uh, a rewriting of Australian history and recasting the country as some sort of evil colonial force. It's never been like that. It's one of the, as you know, as a migrant, you know we're one of the friendliest, happiest places in the world. Uh, why people want to uh, misinterpret that is uh, beyond me. Yeah, e e exactly right. And, and, and Neville Bonner came from the tradition of Martin Luther King Jr., you know, their mission was to make uh, their people true citizens, equal citizens on an equal footing, not just citizens in terms of rights, but responsibilities. And both Bonner and Martin Luther King had harsh words to say for some of their own people and said, look, if you if you want these these uh, these wonderful obligations, these wonderful things that come with being a full citizen, you've also got to behave in a citizenly manner, in a decent manner. 